Hello, my name is Hamid Al Nasser from the Business Development Team here at the Qatar Financial Center. Today's masterclass will focus on sports, more specifically, the business of sports. If we look at the sports sector in Qatar, it's valued at 20 billion US dollars, and that's the forecast for 2023. I'd like to welcome today Khalid Sayed, Senior Advisor for Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, and Cohen Bosma from Qatar Sports Tech, and Jaham Kawari from Business Development Team at Aspire Zone Foundation. Here today with us is Mr. Brosma, Program Director at Qatar Sports Accelerator. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Qatar Sports Tech and their initiatives? Sure, Qatar Sports Tech is an initiative led by uh, QDB and facilitated by amazing partners such as Aspire and uh, the Supreme Committee. And what we do is we search the world for the most promising technologies in the field of sports. Um, for this current program, we've traveled to 21 countries on five continents to really make sure we are able to identify the most promising talent mm. in sports uh, uh, technology from an entrepreneurial uh, standpoint and uh, the most amazing technology for an implementation standpoint. Um, and um, yeah, that's what we do. So are you an active sports player? I used to be, I'm getting a bit fat now. Uh, but I used to play uh, professional football. I played on, uh, on three continents, in Europe, in Holland, where I'm from, um, in Asia and in Australia. And it's amazing to transit from a professional sports uh, uh, career uh, after finishing all my uh, degrees and now using that experience to help entrepreneurs in the field of sports implement uh, technology so that the game itself, whether it's football or in other sports, mm. will be improved not only from a playing uh, uh, standpoint, but also from an experience standpoint. Um, and so how important is it to have relationships with Qatar Finance Center, Qatar Development Bank and Aspire Zone Foundation? So Qatar Development Bank is mandated to diversify the economic profile uh, of the country, mainly uh, the SME uh, sector, so small and medium uh, enterprises. Um, if you want to diversify the economic profile of a country, um, there's two ways uh, of approaching it, or three ways of approaching it, sorry. First one is to build it from uh, uh, the roots in terms of uh, education. Secondly is to partner up with international companies to bring them in uh, Qatar and let them benefit from the local uh, uh, ecosystem that we are establishing right now. And the third option is acquiring these companies to make sure that they are going to be based uh, here. What we do within Qatar Sports Tech is mainly focus on the second part, which is partnering with international uh, startups, uh, small medium enterprises, mm. Uh, to really make sure that they are going to be establishing and adding value to the local uh, ecosystem. So how will Qatar Development Bank and QFC help this program? So this program is just uh, a first start uh, from the National Vision 2030. There have been several um, areas identified of which the sports sector is one. Uh, ultimately, the World Cup is the most uh, um, prominent achievement in, in that aspect. So what we do within um, this specific program is we search the world for the most promising technologies in sports, bring them into uh, Qatar, see what the local ecosystem have, uh, has to offer, uh, which means access to clients, potentially using your technology on uh, the biggest stage in uh, sports, uh, which is the World Cup, um, but also in terms of access uh, to finance. And by really building that ecosystem, building that sports tech hub here in, Qat in Qatar, the companies can be based here and from here go internationally uh, again, which really helps Qatar put itself on the map as a knowledge hub. You mentioned uh, about some innovative technologies. Can you share some? Yeah, sure. I'd love to share. Um, uh, sports tech in itself is very broad. So it can vary from data analytics to enhance individual or team performance um, to sports medical solutions that help injury prevention or injury uh, detection uh, to fan engagement uh, solutions. I do not want to go into the very specifics um, of the different technologies that we have in our current program right now, because if I mention two, I'm not mentioning eight uh, of the 10 amazing companies that we have in our current uh, program. Um, what I do like to mention is that uh, we are definitely working on revolutionizing the world of sports broadcasting. So when you see a game on TV, you see what the producer uh, uh, gives you. Uh, but one of our companies uh, creates technology for you to determine which camera position you would like to see uh, and even to follow your favorite player for 90 minutes uh, throughout the game. 
but also on TV, you're listening to the commentator um, in the region B in Sports uh, gives you, uh, but one of our technologies also democratizes uh, the opportunity to either become your own uh, commentator um, or vote for the commentator you would really uh, would like to listen to on TV. Uh, and this is just two examples specific for uh, broad, uh, uh, sports broadcasting. Um, but I would very much like uh, to mention to everyone uh, back home as well to really go to cutersportstech.com and look at the amazing companies that are in our current cohort. That's impressive. Thank you. One of our viewers watching, uh, Brooke from Hong Kong, asks, what makes Qatar Sports Tech different from other accelerator programs around the world? Thanks, Brooke, for that uh, good question. Um, accelerator programs are not unique um, by the sake of being an accelerator uh, program. What makes an accelerator program is the ability to help entrepreneurs grow uh, and by disclosing an entire ecosystem here in uh, Qatar. And what you can see, why this program is amazing, is also represented by this interview uh, here. So the national vision for Qatar, and I know I mentioned it uh, again, um, everyone here is working towards realizing that same vision. And uh, we are just happy um, to be part of contributing uh, to realizing uh, that vision. So for me, why does it, uh, why does it differ to any other program uh, around the world? Is the ability to closely collaborate um, on one national vision with all the major stakeholders uh, in play. That's very interesting. So how important is it for research and development for these young startups? Research and development and innovation are two different things. Research and development is about inventions. Innovation is about adding value. We are not an R&D uh, program, we are an innovation uh, program, which means the R&D being done has to be applicable and uh, of value added uh, for the individual users uh, there are. So for me, yes, R&D is very uh, important, but when it comes to innovation and making an impact, it is not only about R&D, it is mainly about innovation. How do you think Qatar, as a well-established hub, will aid these startups? So what we do within our uh, program, this program is means to a certain end. So we have to position ourselves in the place of entrepreneurs. So as entrepreneurs, what are you looking for? In most cases, it's access to clients and access uh, uh, to capital. So those are the things we need to facilitate within this uh, program. But access to clients and access to capital, or getting clients and raising uh, capital, is outcome of running your startup really well. What we focus on within our uh, accelerator program is the drivers that define what does running your startup well actually mean, which is viability, feasibility, and desirability. Desirability is about, do I know who my customer is and what value I'm going to be adding? Feasibility is, can I actually solve that problem? And viability uh, through my solution. And viability is, um, can I monetize the added value that I'm offering for my uh, clients? So what startups want is access to clients, access to capital, and access to the entire ecosystem here in uh, Qatar. And this is exactly what we try to uh, facilitate um, through a very intense mentor-driven program here in Qatar. Qatar Sports Tech is incorporated by the QFC. Why did you choose the QFC? The QFC facilitated a very easy process to establish our company here in uh, uh, Qatar. So we get to focus on the things that matter to us most, which is building uh, the ecosystem and not having to worry about all the hassle that uh, is normally or typically involved in starting up a company. You mentioned the ecosystem a couple of times. What do you mean by that? An ecosystem is everything that is needed to build uh, entrepreneurship in sports here in uh, Qatar. Through the facilities at uh, Aspire, through the events organized by the Supreme uh, Committee for Delivery and Legacy, um, through other major sports events happening here in uh, uh, Qatar. So the ecosystem really is everyone and everything that is involved in building entrepreneurship. Thank you very much for answering these questions. I'm sure the viewers will benefit from this. Thanks very much uh, for having me. I hope the viewers had as a good time as I had. Um, and I hope to welcome you and your innovations as an entrepreneur in this amazing ecosystem here in Qatar. Khalid, can you tell us more about the specific role of the Supreme Committee? Hamad, thank you for having me here today. I would like to say uh, hello to all the audience out there. Uh, Supreme Committee was established in 2011. In a nutshell, we are required to deliver an amazing 2022 World Cup tournament and preserve its legacy. 
Uh, obviously, that requires us to build seven brand new stadiums. We are required to refurbish Khalifa Stadium. We have more than 50 projects related to host country operations, and they vary from um, all kinds of projects, uh, say waste management, uh, media center, name it. Uh, we are also coordinating with the different stakeholders to ensure the delivery of the infrastructure required for the tournament. And uh, stakeholders, we're talking like Ashgal, Qatar Rail, all of the ministries, the uh, hospitality industry, uh, name it, everybody, to ensure that we are ready to host more than 1.5 million fans during the tournament. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a senior advisor? I did 22 years uh, in the oil and gas sector. I did six years in the real estate sector. I held few leadership positions, namely uh, the director of supply chain uh, and business development for Occidental Petroleum. And now I'm with the Supreme Committee uh, as an advisor, uh, putting together a strategy for the uh, delivery of the legacy of the uh, tournament. That's extremely interesting. Um, the Supreme Committee has a very big mandate. I have heard of uh, Challenge 22. Can you tell me more about that? Challenge 22 is one of the most interesting projects that we are working on. Uh, what it allows is for those who have innovative ideas to come and present them to us. And then we take them by the hand up to the point where they could produce a prototype or bring it into production. Now, we also do the introduction with some of the capital, uh, venture capital uh, partners who could help them produce. Now we finished phase one. Phase one, uh, we came up with 10 great ideas. And they could go from um, either a device or uh, an application on the phone or any idea of that sort that is related to sports and can help the tournament and beyond. Uh, phase two is coming up. And then we will interview more people and entertain more ideas. We have a question from one of our viewers from Kira in Singapore. What kind of impact do you believe hosting the World Cup will have on Qatar's economy? Uh, Hamad, to answer that question, I would like to recap on uh, the fundamentals of Qatar Vision 2030, which uh, explicitly addresses uh, growth and development in many areas, such as infrastructure, manufacturing, food security, sustainability, and many other areas. Now, the World Cup 2022, what it did for us is worked as a catalyst and uh, an accelerator of those programs. Today, most of the infrastructure is already delivered or on the way. An amazing uh, railway, uh, railway network uh, is under commissioning as we speak. And many of the other programs have reached their, um, actually, they, the, the milestones, the sort milestones. So, what does that mean for the economy? Um, building eight stadiums, state of the art, and all of the infrastructures that I mentioned requires the deployment of uh, specialized contractors, uh, both internationally and locally, the coordination of those contractors. And you can imagine the domino effect that this will have on subcontracting, sub-subcontracting, and the different industries from logistics, from material surprise, uh, marketing, name it. So the opportunities are endless. You have set quite ambitious goals for yourself and as an organization. In preparation for the 2022 World Cup, as you said, many business opportunities has been created and we've received multiple questions on this point. One of them is from uh, PH in London, what are the biggest sectors that you think will benefit from the World Cup? Okay, obviously uh, right now the construction industry is uh, uh, benefiting the most, but that doesn't mean that the other industries are not benefiting. Actually, like I said, there is a domino effect. Uh, the logistics industry, the bulk material and supply industry, specialized equipment industry, marketing and sales, name it. All of the industries and the opportunities, are, as I said, are endless. I would like to use this opportunity 
to say that uh, with the grace of God, we are blessed with the resources and a great le wise leadership that made this happen. During a time when um, uh, the overall economy around the world is going under sort of a recession, including some of our neighboring countries. You mentioned that this event will create many opportunities. So to what degree are you relying on public or private partnerships to deliver this event? This is again an interesting question. Now, obviously, the delivery of the infrastructure and the stadiums created a platform for a great partnership between international specialized contractors and local contractors. Beside that, uh, all of the other uh, stakeholders became our partners in delivering this World uh, 2022 World Cup tournament. So uh, it's very hard to say that, uh, to talk about one partnership than, than, uh, or the other. The interesting bit is that the entire world became a partner in delivering this World Cup. Now, um, again, the opportunities are endless, and as I said before, it's like a domino uh, effect. One thing leads to another, so we're all in it. The partnership is providing uh, technical know-how from abroad, and it's also um, helping us uh, understand uh, what we need on a sustainable uh, basis. So yeah, I can go on and on about partnership, but everybody's a partner in delivering this 2022 World Cup. A lot of valuable information here from uh, Mr. Khalid, the Sayyid uh, Senior Advisor. Thank you, Hamid. And again, thank you. thanks to all the viewers out there for tuning in. So for Qatar Sports Tech, what's your overarching goal? So there's uh, two main goals uh, that we're trying to achieve. One is uh, mainly for the local ecosystem here, and the other goal is for the international or sports tech entrepreneurs uh, out there. For the local ecosystem here, we want to contribute in diversifying the economic profile for the country and help our partners become more innovative through corporate startup collaboration, which is what we facilitate within this uh, program. But the main goal, and this is what drives, uh, uh, this is what drives uh, all of us, we are here to help entrepreneurs uh, succeed. So any entrepreneur out there, if you feel like you can contribute to changing the, uh, the world of sports, feel free to go to QatarSportsTech.com, and I hope to see you here in Doha. What's the selection process for these startups? The selection criteria is dependent on a couple of things. First of all, the strategic validation is the most uh, important one. And the strategic validation is not done by me, but by uh, the, the partners we serve in this, uh, uh, through this program. Um, if the strategic validation uh, is done, we go then uh, into technical evaluation of the product uh, at hand, and most importantly, uh, uh, the skills of the team. The skills of the team, are two components, hard skills and soft skills. Hard skills meaning, is it a multidisciplinary uh, team that is able to take an idea or take an initiative um, from where they are right now to where they need to be to add value to their clients? And the soft skill part is actually also a very important uh, uh, part, which says a lot about how you are as a person. And that soft skill evaluation um, is a very important thing because at the end of the day, we're trying to build a collaborative community here in uh, Qatar. So we do not want people to come here, to take and then uh, uh, leave again. We want uh, to attract people that are here, that are willing uh, to share and build the Sports Tech Hub collectively. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to welcome uh, Jaham al Kuwari from Aspire Zone Foundation. Firstly, uh, Jaham, how important do you think sports is for Qatar and the citizen of Qatar? Well, personally, I can tell you sports has uh, made me more disciplined in life and realizing how important uh, being healthy is and how much it affects your uh, well-being and your performance at work or at, uh, at home or anywhere else. Can you tell us more about Aspire Zone Foundation and the entities it encompasses? All right, first of all, Aspire Zone is a uh, government-established uh, uh, organization. It started in uh, 2006. Um, first, it was, inc it was uh, incorporated to host the uh, Asian Games, which happened in 2006. Um, Aspire Zone has three member organizations. Um, first, Espitar, which is Sports Medicine Institute. And then we have Aspire Academy, which is an uh, uh, academy for developing uh, young athletes, promising young athletes to be champions in the future. 
And then we have uh, Aspire Logistics. Aspire Logistics is basically the venues and facility management that uh, supports Espitar and uh, Aspire Academy. So now let's talk about this very new special project that the Qatar Finance Center is closely affiliated with. The Sports Accelerator is an all-encompassing sport business hub where startups, multinational companies can benefit from. So can you tell us a little bit more about the Sports Accelerator? The uh, Sport Accelerator is a joint initiative with our partners, the Qatar Financial Center, the Supreme Committee, and the Qatar Development Bank, which Startup Bootcamp is a part of. Um, the Sport Accelerator is, is basically a, uh, a hub, a sport business district hub that we are trying to create in Qatar, where multinational companies can come and locate in Qatar to do business. And how will it help attract international companies? Well, at the Sport Accelerator, we plan on uh, uh, giving access to, uh, giving the, our new our tenants or these new companies, small, medium enterprises, access to uh, the facilities we have at Aspire, access to uh, procurement uh, opportunities in, uh, in Qatar, and also give them access to the vast opportunities that come with hosting the World Cup and other events like the uh, FINA World Swimming Championships. Can you name a couple of sport businesses that have joined the Sports Accelerator? Um, we have got a lot of interest uh, from companies around Europe and uh, local companies also and companies in the region. Um, some, a company that uh, I'll say that has interest is uh, PSG, Paris Saint-Germain, the football club. Um, also La Liga. Um, a lot of uh, tech companies in the uh, fan engagement and promotion uh, in, uh, side of uh, sports uh, of the sports industry, um, and but there are there's a lot of interest, and by the time we open, it should be full. <clears throat> I'm sure there's a, a lot of advantages. Can you tell us a bit about the advantages of the Qatari sports market and the sports accelerator? The sports accelerator is a business hub located in Aspire Zone, Aspire Zone Sports City. Um, basically, we want to have all these multinational companies from abroad come to set up in Qatar under one roof, uh, creating a uh, sort of an ecosystem where the companies can work together and creating a synergy where they can provide service to one another or provide services to Aspire Zone. Qatar has been hosting major sporting events for decades now. How did that change the landscape for sport businesses? The sporting landscape has uh, changed over the years by hosting these uh, uh, numerous events throughout the year. Between uh, now and uh, 2022, they're set to host another 108 events. Um, apart from putting Qatar on the map as a, uh, as a uh, sporting destination, it has also uh, diversified the economy in uh, the sporting sector. Uh, one of our viewers uh, watching uh, has a question. Uh, uh, Rob from Paris. Rob is asking, what are the main catalysts for the evolution of the sports industry in Qatar? Thank you, Rob, for that question. Um, one of the main catalysts for the evolution of sports in Qatar, I would like to say, is probably the leadership in uh, realizing the importance of sports, not just in our uh, in society, but in our economy and the long driven, uh, the long driven support that they have given us for uh, achieving uh, what we have today. How will the Sports Accelerator cement Qatar's position as a global sports hub? Well, first of all, we have the World Cup coming up and uh, we, want, uh, we want to showcase Qatar. We want to showcase Qatar to the world what we can do and, uh, for the World Cup and after. So by having these companies here, they will set up and they will stay and do business, not just within Qatar, but they will be a headquarters for the region and for, for, say, for Asia, for Africa, and they can export their services, not just within Qatar, but to the rest of the world from Qatar. That's impressive, actually. Ultimately, what do you expect from these companies and how can they grow in Qatar and beyond? So we want these companies to uh, succeed in Qatar. We want them to contribute to uh, the Qatar economy and uh, diversifying a diversifying the economy from the hydrocarbon and moving into the sports sector. <clears throat> we want uh, these companies to uh, provide services that uh, are necessary for hosting mega events. We want, these we want these companies to set up 
a headquarters here in Qatar and also provide services to the rest of the world from Qatar, not just uh, within Qatar in the future. Ultimately, we want these companies to uh, contribute to uh, the uh, sports sector in Qatar and diversifying Qatar's economy. What incentives do you offer for companies? Um, well, apart from uh, the Qatar Financial Center's uh, uh, regime, they can come set up using the Qatar Financial C Center's uh, regulatory uh, system. Um, apart from that, they can come and be in the hub of the sports city. They can have access to all the facilities. They can have access to all the research done by the Sports Medical uh, Institute, uh, SPITAR, and they can have even access to all these athletes. For instance, uh, Kuhn, right now, he's actually in Aspire Zone with the sports tech uh, incubators, and he's getting uh, access to athletes, getting access to facilities. And what about office space? So right now we have a designated uh, premises, uh, which is uh, the QFC actually uh, designated premises to do business. So companies that are uh, established in the QFC uh, umbrella can, can do business at our location in Aspire Zone. Mm -hmm. The office is going to be brand new. It's going to be state-of-the-art facilities in the heart of Aspire Zone. Um, we're going to be giving them uh, state-of-the-art, world-class facilities. Um, the offices will have state-of-the-art technology, and we'll also give, be giving them competitive rental prices, within, not competitive in Qatar and with the rest of the world. Uh, Jaham, who can join the Accelerator program? Well, uh, we want, first of all, before we start, we want strategic uh, uh, companies. Uh, companies that will we know will add value, but we we do accept uh, small medium enterprise uh, companies from anywhere around the world that are relevant to sport. It doesn't like for, not manufacturing, for instance, but sports medicine, sports research, um, fan engagement companies, promoting promotion companies, uh, media companies, broadcasting companies. So I want to know what's the difference between sports accelerator and Qatar Sports Tech? Uh, the facilities that Jaham uh, mentioned, uh, I've been there myself, they're amazing. And what happens there, it really is the place where everything sports related, sports and technology related in Qatar, comes together under one roof. Um, so the place where the companies get incubated versus the process for getting incubated, which is what Qatar Sports Tech facilitates. How can a company apply for the program? Well, it's pretty simple uh, right now. Uh, all you need to do is uh, get on our website, sportsaccelerator.qa, and uh, send us an email on the contact us, and we'll respond to you. Thank you very much, uh, Jaham. I think our viewers will benefit, especially the sports companies who are interested in the sports market in Qatar. Thank you for answering these questions, and thank you, Khalid. Uh, thank you, uh, Cohen and uh, Jaham, for uh, providing this valuable insight uh, about the lucrative opportunities in the Qatari sports market. That's it for today. Thank you for tuning in into this masterclass. Please remember to take advantage of the team of experts here at the QFC for any of your business inquiries. If you have any questions, please put them underneath. And from here, the team at the Qatar Financial Center, goodbye for now.